Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad to have you here this morning. It's a great day to come together and worship the Lord on Super Sunday. This is the, uh, it is Super Sunday, right? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. I don't follow those things, but um, <laughs> we're glad you're here. A uh, special welcome to those of you watching on live stream this morning from wherever you are. I know we have folks in Wichita Falls and New Jersey and Dallas and Richardson and uh, California and Whoever else is watching from wherever you are, we welcome you on our live stream feed this morning. Again, uh, we welcome all of you. If you're a guest of our church today, a very special welcome to you. We hope that everyone will sign in this morning. Registration pads are on the end of each pew, and we encourage members and guests alike to sign in and let us know that you're here this morning. I want to uh, remind you on the back of your bulletin, there's some great opportunities coming up, including a daddy-daughter dance and and uh, Scout Sunday next Sunday, some Bible studies, financial peace, some great offerings that are coming up uh, starting this week. So I just want you to be aware of those, those opportunities to deepen your faith. There are some great things there to deepen your faith and your knowledge of the Bible. And I'd encourage you also a, a grief class that's starting next, next Sunday. So uh, again, great ways to, to, for healing, hope, and, and knowledge. Uh, we hope that you'll, you'll be aware of those. Today we're having a, a kickoff celebration for our year of service. And if you haven't already been over there, don't leave the campus without going over to Coleman Family Hall and seeing all the displays over there, um, the ways that our church is in, engaged in service. You can tell us ways that you're in, engaged in service in the community. There are t-shirts over there. There are balloons over there. There's a mobile uh, network mobile food pantry over there that you can see how they distribute food with the, the mobile food pantry. Some great ways that we are blessing our community. If you brought canned goods today for Network of Community Ministry, thank you so much for doing that. If you didn't, you can bring them anytime. Absolutely anytime. But, but um, again, it's one way our church tries to uh, bless our community and, and folks in our community who may need that, that extra help. And again, we're glad that you hope that you'll go over today and be part of our year of service. Again, we're glad you're here today. It's a blessing to come together and worship the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing.
And now as we come to the time of prayer in our service, there are names on the screens of those who in our congregation and faith community are in need of our prayers this week and continuing beyond this week. There are also names on the screens of those who will be receiving prayer blankets uh, within the next several days. Please take time and come by and look at those names tie a knot in the fringe, and say a prayer for those people who will be receiving those blankets, for they are such a blessing to people in their time of need, in their time of pain, their time of sorrow. So please take time to come by and tie a knot and say a prayer. And now let us go to God in prayer. O God of us all, Hear our prayers this morning, prayers of joy and laughter, prayers of sorrow and pain, of anxiety and restlessness, prayers of peace and quiet. For we know that you hear all of our prayers, whether screamed into the void or whispered in our hearts. You know our prayers before we pray them, as you know us each one of us intimately, more intimately than we know ourselves. You are as close as our breath, and you breathed into each of us the breath of life at our birth, giving us that God spark within that makes us unique and uniquely yours. God, this morning we pray for our church, our nation, and our world. For at this time, circumstances all around us seem overwhelming. People have lost sight of being respectful toward one another, justice for others, compassion and mercy mercy for another person. We seem to have lost sight of the fact that you made us all and that we should understand that we need one another. We should harmonize with one another to utilize each other's gifts to complement one another. For each of us has so much to offer this world if we would learn to work together. Oh God, beginning this year of service, help us to look beyond our walls to the world outside and to seek ways to serve one another for the greater good of all of us. For in in giving we receive, and in receiving we release love into the world around us. Help us to always be aware of those outside our circle who need kindness and a helping hand. God, walk with those who suffer. Comfort those who struggle. Hold up those who have lost loved ones and friends. Strengthen those who are addicted. Unsettle those who are comfortable. Soften hearts that have hardened. For to you, all things are possible, and no person is lost beyond your forgiving love and grace. Help us to know that no matter what we've done or not done, you are with us and love us beyond our imagining. It's in the comfort of that loving spirit that we pray these things. Amen. And now let the the ushers come forward for our offering, and remember that you can give online as well.
Let the church say, amen. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter beginning at verse 20. Listen now for the word of the Lord. As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has arranged the body giving greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. My sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. All right, Super Bowl Sunday fans, let's do our 
quick Super Bowl official poll. How many people are pulling for the San Francisco 49ers? Okay, Kansas City Chiefs. All right. I, uh, uh, I saw Pat Mahomes is here today, so I stand up, Pat. You better get on a plane for Miami. I mean, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, how many people are in it for the commercials? And how many people don't care? All right, all right. Well, uh, I'm pulling for the Chiefs, and I'll tell you why. In 1983, um, I graduated from Austin College, a football powerhouse, and um, was invited to uh, try out with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I remember what it was like to drive up to Arrowhead Stadium and just be in awe of this giant stadium and walk out on that field, be in that locker room, walk out on that field. And, and I remember what it was like to see these guys that were just so much bigger and so much faster. Other than that, I was right in there with them. I mean, you know, just, um, I was small, but I was really, really slow. So, uh, and, and um, you know, I remember running my route down and across the middle. And Todd Blackledge, I remember him delivering the ball and I was right in stride and I caught the ball. And I remember the all pro safety whose helmet hit me right here in the side of the head. And I don't remember much after that, strangely. Um, but, um, but you know, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, I just point out, they, they didn't, they, they let me go after that, and um, they've never won a Super Bowl since. I'm just saying, <laughs> the coincidence, you know, I don't know. But it's been a long time since they've been in the big game. Um, might have had something to do with that, that draft they made in 1983 when they passed on Dan Marino, but, but they also let me go, and I've just, so I'm for them. I'm for them today. I hope they'll Hope they'll get it done, but you know, at the end of the day, someone will win, someone will lose, and um, we'll go on about life, right? So uh, today I want to talk about, um, and if, I like what Dwayne Thomas said, by the way, if, it, if it's the ultimate game, why do they play it again next year? I mean, you know, that's, <laughs> so today I want to talk about uh, something that's, it, it is football related. This week in, in my congregational email, if you don't get that, you can sign up for that on our website. But uh, in my congregational email, I shared some wisdom, homespun wisdom from my high school football coach. And one of the things that he said really um, hit me in a way that I don't think I'd ever heard it. Maybe in high school, I probably wasn't listening as much. But something in the playbook he said about what a winner is. And I want you to hear what he said. He said, the winner is a group of people working together for a common cause, honoring, respecting, loving another, recognizing that each person is a unique individual. Did you catch that first part? The winner is a group of people. He wasn't talking about individuals winning and losing. He was talking about a team concept. And a team concept is so important in every walk of life. Surely it's important in sports to have a team concept. When you are part of a team, you know, you need everyone pulling in the same direction. Every unique individual brings certain gifts to the team, but the team is greater than any individual. There's something about working together, each individual doing their, fulfilling their role, that helps a team have success. The winner is a group of people striving after a common cause. Surely this is true in business. You need, in a business, you need everyone focused on the main mission. You need everyone focused together. Now, not everyone has the same talents or abilities. Not everyone has the same giftedness. Everyone has a different role to play. And yet, when everyone is working together, wow. It's a beautiful thing to see when everyone's working toward the same common purpose. It's that way in a marriage, isn't it? Husbands and wives will tell you this, that, that it's important in a marriage that 
that both parties are on the same page, that you're thinking as much about the other, if not more so, than you are about yourself, that you're working together toward a common cause, and it's not just about you. It's about seeing yourself as part of a team. And I think um, so many young couples fail to see that, the importance of seeing themselves on the same page. We're a team together it makes such a difference. Surely this is true in the church as well. And this is what Paul was writing about in, in 1 Corinthians. Uh, throughout the, the, this letter to the Corinthian church, he's talking to them about this team concept, this idea that the church is a team. The church is uh, made up of individuals, but the church is a team. Why was he writing to them about this? Because they were having dissension within the, the church. They were having division within the church. You had different people in Corinth from different walks of life, different nationalities, different ethnic backgrounds, different races, um, different cultural backgrounds, and they're coming together and they're worshiping together. Different economic backgrounds are evident from what Paul writes that some are, are wealthier and, and better off than, than others, that some people are barely scraping by. And so as he writes to the, the Corinthian church, he's talking to them about seeing themselves as one body, that they are a team. You are the body of Christ. Individuals, yes, but individually you're members of the same body. We have to see ourselves in that way in, 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 a, in the church, you know, and, and to see that, that we are a team and there's something about, um, about having a team concept, that we're all on the same team. We have a common mission, our mission with, with open hearts and minds. We welcome people for Christ. We grow people in Christ. We serve people with Christ. This is our purpose. It's why we're here. It's what draws us together. We all come with different gifts and different abilities and, and different uh, strengths that we bring to the team, but all of us are focused on that common mission. How can we share the love of Christ? How can we receive the love of Christ for ourselves, but how do we share that love with others? So, so Paul talks about this idea of, of, you know, in the church, you're you're an individual and you're alone and yet you're not. You're part of something greater than yourself. You're part of a team. You're part of the body of Christ. That does not discount the importance of every individual. And I think this is so important that we understand this, that Paul is affirming the inherent worth and value of every individual. This is something that's so important in Corinthians to understand every person is valued as part of the team. As Paul says in, in verse 20, um, as it is, there are many parts but one body. And then he says in verse 22, the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are in, indispensable. That means every, every person is important to the whole. Every person has a unique contribution to make to the whole. You know, when, we, when we're part of the church, we use our individual gifts. We say that we will love the Lord our God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we'll love our neighbor as ourselves, and that we'll live out our commitment to Christ through the church by offering our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. I once had a football coach challenge our team. He said, if every member of the team were as committed to the team as you are, would our team be successful or not? I think about that in, in terms of the church when we talk about those commitments to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. If everyone were as committed to that as you are, would our church be thriving or would our church be struggling? It's a good question to ask yourself if you're part of any organization, any team. It's an important thing for us. To, if everyone's as committed as I am, is this going to work? We, we, we all work together. That's why we all contribute to the church with our financial 
contributions, those pledges that we've made last month that, that we, we say we, we will support the church with our gifts, our service in this year of service, we're, we're finding ways that we can be of service, not only to the church, but to our community. And so everyone has a unique gift and a unique way of doing that. Every person has a talent. Every person is uniquely gifted. You think about people who, who are part of our prayer blanket ministry, and that's their ministry. We have people that do Habitat for Humanity, and man, they're amazing at that. Some people who do Habitat, and they're not amazing at it, but they do it because they just want to be out there helping build a house. And, you know, sometimes they feel like, well, I may be just in the way here, but... but um, but I'm part of the team and I can do my part. I can hold the, the ladder or hold the nails for somebody while somebody else does that who knows what they're doing. Um, you know, we have amazing uh, teaching ministries, educational opportunities, amazing people who use their gifts to teach others and to offer insight into issues with others. That's every member in ministry in some way. Every person doing their, fulfilling their role. We had a, a woman in this church years ago who was just in her Sunday school class. She did everything. She was so active. She and her husband were so active in this church. They did so much for this church. And she was, um, in the, her last days, she was basically bedridden. And um, I remember seeing her and she said, I'm just so frustrated. I can't do what I used to do for the church. I, I can't be up there helping like I used to help. She did so much. And I said, I said, she said, I just can't do anything. I said, will you do one thing for me? Will you pray for me? And will you pray for the church? And she just lit up. She said, I can do that. I do that every day anyway, so I can do that. And she just, you know, that she spent faithfully spent her last days praying for me, for the clergy of our church. She prayed for you. She prayed for the choir. She prayed for all of us and all of our ministries. That's what she did as her service to the church is that she, was, she found a way she could serve. All of us can find ways that we can serve and we are better together. There's something about each one of us being part of the whole and finding our place. We, we can't all do the same thing. We can't all, we're not all gifted the same. And that's the beautiful part of the body of Christ. Each one of us is uniquely gifted. And yet each of us is part of a greater whole together. This concept works in every part of life. When individuals come together to support a common cause, something happens that's beautiful. But what's distinctive about the church? Paul says the distinction in the church, how the church team is different than most other teams, is the, the way the church cares about each other. It's that caring aspect of the, the faith community that makes the heart of the difference. And I love the way he says this in verse 26. If one member suffers, we all suffer together. If one member is honored, we all rejoice together. I have to tell you, I think the clergy would, would agree with me that one of the most beautiful things to see in this church is the way members care for each other. To see the way that people come around each other in, in times of need and brokenness and death and people hurting and to see the way people rally and rejoice around each other in good times, celebrating each other's achievements. It's one of the most beautiful things about the body of Christ. And, and it's what was said about the early church when, when people would look at the people in the early church, they said, look at these Christians, how they love one another. It was so unique compared to the selfishness of the world that people wanted to be a part of it. Someone sent me a blog written by a, a man in his 30s, and he said that he left the church as a young man because he, um, 
he found he felt like it was all about community and he was searching for deeper spiritual connection and searching for God and so he left the church spent about 10 years outside the church because all the church was to him was about community and he said I came back to the church because the church was about community and in the midst of that community I met God I experience God's grace and God's love I'm so glad he found his way back because there's something special something so unique about the body of Christ in the body of Christ you're never alone you're never alone you may feel lonely but in this body you are not alone and nowhere is that symbolized more than at this table when we gather at this table to to celebrate the, the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ and we celebrate that though many we are one in Christ all partaking of the same loaf all partaking of the same cup there's something powerful about this symbolic act we gather together in this holy mystery this grace-filled mystery in which we who are many become one in Christ can there be anything greater in this world than being a part of this team being a part of the body of Christ and knowing that as different as we are in this room we are one in the love of Christ. I pray that as you come today to this table, you will experience that unity. You'll look around at the body of Christ. Look around at each other and give thanks for the uniqueness of each individual and give thanks that through the love of Christ, these unique individuals have become one. Amen. At this time, I invite those that are helping us to serve to come forward. And as we prepare to come to the table, we want to let you know that if you are here worshiping with us today and you desire to come to this table, you are welcome. This is not our table that we should turn anyone away. This is God's table, God's meal, and so it is for all of us. We serve communion by what's called intinction, and that's a big fancy word that simply means you will be offered a piece of bread and the cup will come by. Simply take the bread, dip it into the cup to partake of both elements at the same time. As we are gathered here in worship, we realize that our table extends beyond our walls out into the community. And so we are also blessing the elements that are going out to our homebound members. As you come forward this morning, if you would like to participate in the communion offering, our offering this morning it goes to Genesis Women's Shelter, which helps to raise awareness of the sin of domestic violence and also helps to protect and provide safety and support for women who are victims of domestic violence. I invite you to prepare your hearts as we pray our prayer of confession. God of our restoration, whenever we come home to you, we realize how far we have strayed and how much we have forgotten of your law and your love. We have not loved you with our whole hearts or loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, heal us, restore us to our relationship with you and to one another. Brothers and sisters, I assure you that you have been restored in the grace of God. God's word does not come to condemn us, but to make us wise, reviving our souls, and rejoicing our hearts. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And there he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. When you do this, remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. When you drink this cup, remember me. And so it is in remembrance of all that God has done for us, and especially in the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, who brings us together as one, that we gather around this table as unique individuals, and yet in the body of Christ, we are one. We pray that God's Holy Spirit would fall upon these gifts of bread and wine and fall upon us as a community of faith, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In that spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Join with me in reading the prayer after receiving. God of life and of new life, bless these gifts that we have been given, that they may strengthen us to go into the world, to love our neighbors, to reconcile with your beloved, and to live as examples of grace and care. May each of us be a reflection of you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's someone here today who would unite with our church family by your profession of faith in Christ or by your transfer of membership to our church from another, our doors are open to you. Two ways to do that this morning. One is to be received during the closing hymn. We'd invite you to come forward and stand here at the chancel rail. The other way is after worship today to go to our joining room. The joining room is right down the north hallway, also known as our bride's room, the joining room on Sunday mornings. Um, you can uh, meet one of our staff members there, and they can visit with you and, and receive you into the church or answer any questions you may have about joining the church. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing. though many are one, one body in Christ. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that an amazing way to think about who we're called to be? I hope that before you leave today, you'll go over to our year of service kickoff celebration, grab a t-shirt, find out what's going on and how you can be a part of it. It's over in Coleman Family Hall, and it really is a celebration of service. It's a celebration of ways our church is already in service and ways that we can be involved in service going forward into the future. God has um, amazing dreams, I think, for our world, an amazing dream that can only be realized when we join together as individuals into one body to share the love of God through our Savior Jesus Christ. May we do that.
May we embody his love. May we go and serve our neighbor. May we be a great team for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.